everyone, this is Martha. I'm a relationship counselor and clinical sexologist. And this actually came up when I was in Manila about maybe three weeks, four weeks ago. And um, I was asked this really good question. And again, today I repeated it uh, during a session. And so I thought I would um, share it with you. Um, a lot of couples have uh, sexual desire discrepancy so this is when one person uh, wants to have sex more than the other and uh, very rarely do I have a situation where both people have high sex drives and uh, sex gets in the way of life by that I mean when you want to have sex and you cannot because there are things to do and there's work to be done errands to be run <laughs> and uh, this is just part of life so what can you do when uh, you are feeling horny, you want to have sex, but you cannot? So the first thing you do is you want to focus on what needs to be done. And we all do this. We, uh, we postpone. We postpone, we delay our gratification. And it is when we are kids that we are not able to delay our gratification. Uh, maybe some kids are better than others. For instance, you give them 50 cents and you say if you wait uh, tomorrow, there'll be another 50 cents so you can buy something bigger and better. Uh, so by little exercises like this, uh, kids actually learn how to delay their gratification. And uh, if we learn how to delay our gratification, for instance, that's the cost of uh, delaying what we want to do. For instance, if I save, then I can buy a house. If I save, uh, I can put the money towards investment versus buying this bright new shiny object. Uh, we are learning how to delay gratification. So why is it when it comes to sex, we feel horny and then we feel that we cannot do anything about it and then we feel that we are out of control. What we can do is we can delay it. And it's like this little muscle that we have. With practice, it actually does get easier. And by saying delaying, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're depriving yourself. It just means later. So perhaps you're feeling horny and uh, your partner is not available. You can choose. It's a choice. You can choose to delay, delay it. Maybe it's very difficult to delay by a week. But how about if it's uh, half a day? How about if it's an hour? So that's the first suggestion that I have for you. That actually delaying our gratification is not a bad thing. It actually trains us to be um, masterful of our sexuality. So instead of your sexuality mastering you, you master your sexuality. And um, this is seen as something bad. And we always think that our sex life is out of control or we think that I cannot control it. Well, have you tried? If you don't try, you don't know that actually you are the master of your destiny, you are the master of your reality, you are the master of your sexuality. And by that, I don't mean like depriving yourself so much so that you shut down your sexuality, you turn it off. That's not what I'm saying either. You learn how to work with who you are within the constraints of the conditions you are given. And actually, this is life. Uh, so li life is just a mirror of everything that is happening. And what I'm saying is probably not new to you. So that's the first suggestion that I have for you, delayed gratification. So the second suggestion that I have for you is to channel your sexual energy. That's right. Hoo -hoo, ha -ha, hoo -hoo, ha. So we know how to do this in Chinese, uh, uh, Tai Chi, uh, Kung Fu, uh, uh, whatever you call it, uh, redirection. Uh, so channel your sexual energy. It comes and then it goes. Uh, it's like the, the four seasons of the... Um, seasons of the year <laughs> it comes in a cycle um, and we eat and then we sorry I always say this but we eat and then we want to defecate we drink and then we want to pee so why is it that we are so scared of uh, the tides of life so uh, you can channel it you can channel it you can channel it so you're feeling it you're feeling horny uh, yummy juicy sexy you feel like you want to masturbate the energy rises and then what you can do is you can channel it into something else so this actually is in the book um, what is it the, the Napoleon Hills uh, um, book uh, is it Think and Grow Rich or is it the Millionaire's Mind 
Uh, so this is not something that I came up with. He talks about the transmutation of sexual energy and actually that's exactly what I'm talking about. Basically something that comes in a certain form, it, it changes form. So how do you do that? You turn your sexual energy um, that you have uh, into something, into your work, into your life purpose, into a piece of art, into uh, great uh, buildings, architecture. And uh, so this is, uh, this, there's a time and place for everything. Our sexual energy is a really potent energy that is within us. So instead of it being out of control, what you do, you redirect it into something else, into your life's work. And uh, it's not something that is scary and dangerous. It's something that you own that is your resource. And so you channel it into uh, work. So I have, I have four books and uh, that's essentially what I experienced uh, in my second book. I was going through birthing pains and uh, what I did was I raised my sexual energy and I poured that energy into my work. I bled from my heart and through my fingers, it went into the keyboard and it came forth uh, in the form of my heart's um, pulsating through the words uh, into my books uh, especially so my uh, second and third book especially my third book and uh, this is what we are capable of doing we are such creative beings we know how to uh, uh, wait for hello everyone who's watching we, we know how to wait for um, something good and better and we've learned like for instance you study hard so that you get your degree and the best way to get your degree is to break it down into different modules in, is to do well for each subject so by by us taking this sexual energy and channeling into our work we actually see this in something that is tangible that's something that's uh, perhaps a uh, permanent and uh, this becomes an extension of who you are so it's it's like a flow of life you know it flows and it can flow into your work into your life purpose into feeding your best work so I just gave two suggestions uh, those of you who just joined you can just go back and watch this video it's on my Facebook page so the first suggestion that I had for you is to learn how to delay gratification the second suggestion that I have for you is to learn how to ooh, channel your sexual energy and the third suggestion that I have for you is pretty obvious the third suggestion is if you feel horny and your partner's not around instead of thinking of masturbation as the poor cousin of sex a lot of people say actual sex or proper sex uh, instead of thinking of masturbation as the poor cousin of uh, partnered sex uh, think of it as a way in which you can come back into yourself come back into your core come back into your being come back into loving yourself instead of seeing masturbation as something that's dirty uh, shameful sinful instead of seeing masturbation as something that is uh, uh, to be done and only to be done privately secretly and uh, quickly instead of seeing it that way how about taking the time to see it as a way of loving yourself much more deeply so when you do that, your sexual energy is rising and you're feeling sad, uh, frustrated, desperate, unhappy that your partner doesn't have the same sex drive as you, what you can do is you can go deeper into loving yourself so that you don't feel deprived. And also there were other suggestions that I gave which is delayed gratification and um, uh, channeling your sexual energy. So these are the three suggestions that I have for you. Uh, it's a Saturday afternoon in Singapore. I, um, I just finished my two sessions with my clients and I'm hosting a coffee uh, get together and so I decided to do this video. I'm at this cafe and uh, my bag is uh, at another place. I just wanted to choke the table over there. So yeah, these are my three suggestions that I have for you. Uh, and uh, you may want to share your thoughts uh, in this video below. And um, um, I just want to end by saying that our sexual attitude is so important. If you think that um, it's something that is scary, then it will be scary. If you if you are scared of it, one of the ways you can do is to look at it, is to learn about it, is to explore, is to go deeper into uh, working through your shame and your issues around your sexuality. And uh, this is what I do in my work. 
So I have four books as I mentioned just now and for those of you who are interested to uh, become more comfortable with your sexuality, uh, you can uh, check it out. So I strongly recommend my second book which is called Orgasmic Yoga. So Orgasmic Yoga is a practice in which you self-pleasure for 30 days for 30 minutes and uh, you can learn much much more uh, in the book so you can get it on Amazon and I'm planning to do a uh, uh, self pleasure month for the month of May, uh, okay, which is next month, and um, I my third book is uh, called for uh, from princess to queen. So this is uh, also another uh, really good book that you can also get on Amazon. My fourth book uh, has been published, but is not on Amazon yet, uh, but it will be, and uh, it's it's called Unhibit uninhibited. It's a photo book of uh, 20 Asian vulvas. Um, I have been so busy with uh, Festival of Love and then uh, I was busy with uh, travels so I am uh, taking some time to recover and taking things a little bit slower, slower. Um, but yes I'm very um, keen to uh, work on my fifth book. I love books and uh, the reason why I love books is because I, 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 I am a bookworm. <laughs> I am a geek. I have four degrees. I love studying, I love reading, I love learning and I love books. And uh, so um, books will be my legacy hopefully. So yeah, this is Martha of uh, Eros Coaching. Uh, check out my website, that's eroscoaching.com and uh, check out my books on Amazon and uh, follow me on uh, Facebook and also I have uh, Eros Coaching Facebook page so you can check out all that but the best way to keep in touch with me actually is to sign up for my emailer, my email list that's uh, eroscoaching.com why? Because that's where I share very personal things that I only share with my secret friends and I treat everybody in my community as my secret friend um, because I want to reward you for showing up, for subscribing to the list. So this is where I share uh, things that are happening in my life uh, uh, for the week uh, usually. And so it's worthwhile uh, subscribing to my email list. That's eroscoaching.com. Okay, bye.